everybody, all right. So we're gonna get started into actually uh, creating our actual game, our platform game. Um, but first, before we do, we need to do some uh, kind of boring things. Um, so to prevent memory leaks, one of the things we have to do is we actually have to create a function to unload the pictures that are uh, or images that are already loaded into the uh, engine. So we're gonna do public void unload menu resources, um, and then we're just pretty much gonna do. Um, Menu texture. I don't know if you guys can hear my phone. Sorry about that, though. Menu texture atlas dot unload. Um, pretty much unloads all the textures on it. So every single texture that was attached to it, which were these two here, and then we're just going to set it to null. So we're going to te texture atlas equals uh, null. Come on. Um, so it equals nothing. Um, so we're going to call that uh, when we pretty much uh, go into main menu scene when we dispose the scene. So here we're gonna do resources or resource manager dot get instance dot um, <coughs> unload menu resources. Um, so it's gonna unload them when the dispose scene is called. Now we need to make it so that when that scene or when that we need to make it so this is called pretty much. So go back to scene manager, go to set scene and do current scene dot uh, on dispose or I guess what was it? Dispose scene. Yeah, so dispose scene. Um, so just call that, and then pretty much when we set the scene, um, actually, I'm sorry, before we do that, we have to do if current scene equals equals null. I'm sorry, if it's not equal to null. Um, because, for example, when we first create the menu scene, it calls the scene here, but because it's the first scene, uh, current scene is equal to null, so we have to make sure that there's some there's a scene set there already. Um, so if there is, then it's going to dispose the scene and all of its uh, image stuff like that. So um, that's done. Uh, let me see if we have to do. Don't think we have to do anything with the menu. Let's just double check though. Dot dispose. No, that's normal. Uh, should be good. Um, okay. So now we're gonna get into the actual gaming part. Um, so I have to create a new class. So we're gonna do game uh, scene. Simple enough. Extend base scene, of course. Extends base scene, of course. Um, and then implement the methods like usual. Now we're gonna kind of split this up into different functions to keep it organized. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna just add this to the bottom. We do public or private void uh, set background. And what you guys can do is you guys can always um, select like a parallaxing background or um, I mean different colors or an image, for example, if you want to. But for now, I'm just gonna make it a color just to keep it simple. I mean it's not too fancy. I'm more on the coding side of things and actually getting the game to work than making the freaking game look pretty so um, you, you guys can do that on your own time for now I'm just going to create um, create the important parts um, next we're going to create the HUD so we're going to be adding more onto this later uh, so we're going to private void create HUD and now what this is going to do is it's going to um, pretty much it's going to hold all of the things that aren't going to move so for example you can always move the camera so say you want it to pan and follow a player well it's going to move with the camera all the time so um, we're going to do game HUD equals new HUD um, so say you want to add the score, for example, um, then we're going to um, have to add it to the game HUD so it doesn't move along when you move the camera. Now up here we're going to do private um, HUD, game HUD, just to make it so we actually have a variable. And just implement HUD, I press control shift and L like usual. Um, then below it, just do camera.set HUD, uh, game HUD. Um, and then later on we'll be adding more onto that. Um, they can do create HUD. And now, um, also, we're going to be actually getting into the whole physics of things. So um, the first thing I want you to do is I'm going to be um, explaining how physics really work in this. Um, so we're going to be using the box 2 d extension that we used earlier, that we Im imported earlier. So go to, um, to create a new method called private void create physics. I just added it to the top first. Um, and then what it's going to do is the physics world, it, it really just... I mean, it adds gravity, it does all the collisions for you, it keeps track of everything. I mean, um, f for those of you who works with Box 2D, it pretty much is like a world that you can control with uh, physics, internal physics, add impulses, really saves you all the math, technical things, and just gets you right into the gaming, so it's really, really nice. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is up here, we're going to do private um, physics world. Physics world. Um, now we're going to type in. Uh, I type in physics world equals new uh, fixed step physics world, and then we do 60 comma new vector two, 
and this is going to be the gravity. The first, the first um, parameter was the FPS that we'd like to have, so the frames per second. We want to keep that at 60 frames per second, of course, to keep it running pretty smoothly. Um, the next one's going to be gravity in the X and Y, so we, we don't want them to move left and right. We just want to move the gravity up and down. So they actually have a, a, a static variable or a constant variable for gr the gravity of Earth. So we're just going to set it to that. We're going to do sensor uh, manager that gravity Earth. They have Death Star, which is pretty cool. Jupiter, Moon, um, the island. I haven't messed around with that stuff, but um, type that. Sorry about my phone again. And then we're going to click false there. Um, let me see what that is. I actually forget what that is. That is the. Let's import this. I'm pretty sure there's something to do. Import vector 2 as well. Press control, shift, no. Um, that is the allow sleep. So, I mean, uh, you don't want the physics world to stop randomly to allow it to sleep in between each uh, step. So, you just want to leave that as um, false. And then we need to register. Uh, this is an update handler. So, we do register update handler physics. World. And that pretty much lets the physics world update and be able to, I mean, go to the whole game and check for collisions, add gravity, etc., etc. Uh, so that's that there. Um, now, one thing is with the fixed step world, um, it can be kind of glitchy. I might be thinking about adding in or creating a wrapper around uh, the physics world and creating our own, but I'm still deciding on that. Um, but for now, what we can do is we can really we can just get into whole the whole adding players. Now it's going to be kind of confusing at first, um, but I mean what I can do is I can explain it for you of course. Um, so we're going to do private void and we're just going to do uh, add player I suppose. And now um, we're going to want to create a few uh, variables. Um, first one's going to be, um, actually let me think, yeah we'll we want to create the player body. So we're going to type private body um, player body. And what this is, is it pretty much is a body in the physics world that we're going to add to. Um, and it will pretty much allow us to add impulses, move it around, transform it, um, rotate it. I'll show you here. Player body that apply force, uh, apply linear force, um, fixtures, angular, um, set the velocity, um, get positions, transform it, a bunch of things. Um, it's really, really cool. And this is all done through Box2D, so um, really, really helpful. Um, but getting back to it, we're going to do... Um, First thing we need to do is we need to give the player uh, different, uh, I guess, I guess not really features, but uh, more like settings. So we're gonna do final. We'll see what I mean in a second. Final fixture def player fixture def. Pretty much like a definition for the player. Um, new physics factory dot create. And I should let me see. Let's uh, import everything first. Uh, never mind. Let's do it. Dot create um, fixture def 0.5 f um, 0, 0.0 f uh, 0.75 f. We'll go with that. Now import physics factor, and I'll explain to you what this does in a second. Pretty much, it creates like a definition for. Um, oops. That's not right. One second, guys. We'll figure out what's going on. I'll be right back. Whoops, it was a stupid mistake. Um, I actually put new here. Physics factor is like a static class or a class, but we're using a static function. Um, so what this does is first we have the density, as you can see. So we're setting the density of the object. Um, the elasticity. So uh, I think pretty sure it's how much it bounces. Um, it might be restitution actually. Um, I can check up on that in a second. Um, then we have friction, of course. So friction against other objects. Um, so really, the big the big ones you're gonna have to worry about is the density, so the weight of the object, um, and then friction. Um, now, for some reason, gravity in box 2D does not is not affected by density. So, um, I mean, things like dropping won't drop faster if they're different. Uh, if they're different. Uh, weight. So if this is like 50 and another 25, they're going to drop at the same speed, um, which is 8 point whatever, 9.8, yeah, whatever. Um, but now that pretty much is just the definition that we create um, to add to the player or different bodies. Um, so we're going to add that to the player body, but we have to create that first. Um, so we're going to do, uh, we actually have to create a player sprite. That's right. So we have to do a sprite, um, player sprite. And I'm going to do create sprite, which is that fancy little function we made. I want to do 200 by, uh, well, actually let's do 0 by 0, whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, I want to do, uh, we, have to, we have to actually give, uh, we have to make a player body. Um, I'm going to make one really, really quick. We're going to do a new, uh, we'll make it um, 50 by 100 for now. Um, so this is going to be our player, and he is really just going to be a 
you guys can skip this if you want, it's not that important. Um, you guys can make one as well. Um, or just download a player, I don't really care what you guys do. We're going to make a little stick figure. For now. Give him some legs, some arms, and boom, he's done. Isn't that just a masterpiece? I should be a graphic designer. Um, so I'm going to export this really quick to my folder. What name is player. Alright, so now this is in the... Uh, graphics folder right here. So there's the player. Um, so now we actually have to create the region for it. So we're actually going to go back to the resource manager and we're going to have to use this load game resources function um, or method. It's called function. Um, so we're going to create a new uh, buildable uh, texture atlas. So we're going to do uh, private buildable bitmap texture atlas. Um, then we're going to do game texture atlas. And you might be wondering why I'm using different texture atlas, why not just load them all into one? The reason is because if you remember, we have to unload the menu textures um, at one point. So if we call this unload one and say the game's in there, it's gonna load all the all the game it's gonna unload all the game uh, sprites. So we can have that we can have that done. Um, so we have to create separate ones for each one. Um, then we're gonna do public I texture region uh, player region. Pretty simple. And we're just gonna make this easier. So I'm gonna copy this two these two things here paste them into here. Um, change this to uh, game texture atlas and change this to player region. Um, you can leave this stuff all the same of course just change this to player right here and this to game right here. Um, so that is easy enough. Now we need to um, get a hold of that. So we're going to go back to the game scene. Um, after the coordinates we're going to do resource manager dot uh, get instance dot player region and then after that we're just going to do uh, vbom to give it the first buffer object manager um, so then import sprite i press control shift no like usual um, it's really easy to do you guys just start doing that's pretty simple then we're going to create the player body so we're going to do player body equals new or i'm sorry equals uh, physics world we're going to use our physics world uh, variable here dot create uh, body Oh no, actually we're gonna do uh I'm gonna make this a little bit easier. We have physics factory, not physics world. That create box body. So we're gonna use the physics world. And then we're gonna use the sprite. Player sprite. We use the body type, and this is a uh constant, so body type dot. Um now the difference between these a static pretty much stays in one spot, it doesn't move. Um, so obviously it's not what you want for player. Kinetic or kin kinematic or kinematic or everyone else that uh, it only f it's only affected by a few different forces but it doesn't have full um, forces affecting it. Um, dynamic is what you want, it's going to be able to apply impulses, uh, gravity is going to affect it, um, different things push you on it are going to affect it, things like that. Um, so we're going to make a dynamic body. Um, <coughs> and then for the fixture definition we're going to do player fixture def. Um, so that creates our player body, and that's pretty simple there. Um, then after that, we're going to do physics world dot register physics connector, and we're going to do new physics connector, and we're going to do player sprite player body true and false. Um, now what this does is it pretty much it registers physics and also collisions to the um, to the body itself. So um, we're matching the sprite with the body and then the true part is to update the position and the false part is to update the uh, rotation. So for example if we had friction for example and you're moving along and friction is going to drag across you um, so box D takes it when you drag across it's gonna, you're going to like fall forward. So that's that's rotation obviously so we don't want to update in the rotation. Um, so we're going to leave that as false. So there's the, um, the, the uh, sprite, the body, the position and rotation. So that's what that's going by. Um, and finally, want to, we want to attach this to um, to the scene itself. So we're going to do attach child player sprite. And now we're going to go up to add player. And now it's pretty much ready to rock and roll. Um, I mean, we have everything done for the whole player in physics. Um, next thing we want to do is we want to um, create. Uh, we want to we want want to make the camera follow the actual player. Um, so we're going to do camera.set chase entity. Oh, it's an entity. Um, okay, so what we actually have to do is we have to go up to here, type in private um, sprite player sprite, and then just go down to here and delete the sprite part in front. Um, so it's an actual variable. 
So it's going to follow the player sprite. Um, it's a very cool function. It's a really simple line. You have to implement it yourself. It's really, really nice and easy to use. So I like that a lot. Um, so now let's actually get this working. Um, we're going to go to uh, C Manager. We're going to go to um, here. We're going to type uh, public void set game scene. And we're going to do uh, resource manager dot get instance dot load game resources this time. And then we're going to do game scene equals new uh, game scene. And then we're going to do uh, pretty much copy right above set scene. What the heck was that? Set scene um, game scene. And then current scene dot create scene. And then pretty much going to leave it at that. Um, so now we have to make it so it actually sets a game scene when we click on that fun little button of ours. So we're going to go to the main menu scene. We're going to go down to here and we're going to do scene manager dot get instance dot um, set game scene. And that should do that. Um, now before we actually start running this we have to go back to the resource manager and we have to do this stupid thing right here again that's really annoying. Um, just paste that right below. Change this to game Change this to game, and that should be good. Um, hmm, let me think. Then I'm trying to think. We should be good to go. Um, one last thing. Let's do public void unload game resources, and then we're just gonna do game texture atlas dot unload, and then game texture capital T atlas dot or equals null. And give me one second, guy. All right, so um, sorry about that. Uh, then after this part, we're going to pretty much up. Um, I have to unload the game resources, so we are going to go to the game scene, and we are going to go to um, dispose scene, and then we're just going to do resource manager dot get instance dot um, unload game resources, and that is that. So now there's one more thing that we have to do, um, and I never actually told you guys to do it, I forgot to do it, and when I paused it, I figured out that I forgot to do it. Um, so if you go up to your end engine physics box to the um, extension, open it up, go to libs, and you'll see four folders. Click each one by holding down control and then clicking it, and then press control and C to copy it, or you can right click and click, uh, actually you can't, you have to press control and C. So once they're copied, um, come down here and just paste them all in. Um, and they have to be in there for Box City to work, otherwise just get thrown errors, which you can see right here. I was getting thrown them, and I was trying to figure out what the, um, actually this is in the air, but I was getting thrown errors, and I was trying to figure out what the issue was the whole time. Um, but, uh, yes, that's all worked out. So now if you run the game, um, I'm going to run it as well. Yeah. Open up my phone real quick. And for those of you wondering, I have a Galaxy S3, so it's a pretty decent phone. Click play and uh, it should just show play on the middle screen. Now it doesn't look like it, but right now he is falling. Um, but we're going to add in platforms and things like that so we can stand on it. So that'll be in the next tutorial. So um, thanks for watching, guys. Comment and subscribe. We'll see you later.